We're going up in round six. This will be the last round of the short logs. And on round seven, it will be what I call the cap over or the header logs that cover over the top of the windows and the doors. And when we get to that round, it just does something to the looks of the building. It begins to look like a log cabin. So hang with us. We're going to have some more fun. I've got a log here that needs to lean in just a little bit to be plumb. I'm not sure you can see that bubble, but it needs to come in just a little bit to be plumb. And what I have done, I took my little block of wood, which is six inches long, which would actually be the width of a log. And with this, I can tell how much I need to, to rock it in or to lean it in. And I can either shave that much wood off the lower part of this log or the upper part of the notch on this log which actually is a little bit easier because I can just slide this log out and I can just take my chisel a sharp chisel and just shave off what I need to on the the slope of the upper part of the dovetail I've got a mark right here and I will shave down to that little line there that I made. And I've got that same mark on the outside of the log. I'll just take a sharp chisel and shave the wood off through there. And then I'll lay a straight edge on it to make sure I've got it straight. Then I can slide this log back in. And it should come back to where this log on the right here will, will be plumb. This is my mark right here that I made on the outside, which is the same amount of wood that I would need to, to take off all the way through here. And then check it with a straight edge to make sure that I've still got that good and flat. Just using a really, really sharp chisel. Just shaving it real gently. This is where making the bottom of the notch somewhat concave really comes in handy because you're just having to work with one side or the other. And that eventually will just crush right in. It's easier for me to work this from the outside because I can, I have more room to work my chisel. Just gently shaving. It's a pleasure to work with a sharp chisel. I'm gonna take my mallet and just uh, kind of sever the fibers there up against the shoulder.
Yeah, that might break off. And it seems to be fairly flat still. I know you can't see the bubbles, but that is perfectly plumb. I have my uh, plumb bob hung off of a speed square that's just, I've got a string on it right here, and it's just, I've got a little nail up here on top of the log that holds it up. And I cut a notch here at three inches from the, the back side of the speed square. You don't, unless you have your string set up, you don't want to use the, the three inches or whatever number you choose to use. Always measure from the very back side of the square and that will give you your, your true reading. And I've got a, a plumb bob here. This is a 32 ounce plumb bob that I'm using. I'm fighting the wind today. And uh, the heavier the plumb bob, the better. I'll bring that log that it's hung on, which is actually D-wall. I'll make saw passes and I'll bring it in to where that plumb bob is sitting on the string. I actually have two plumb bobs hanging off this one log in either corner. These are just plastic speed squares and I've got the notch cut in there and the string is, is hanging on that, holding the plumb bob. Now this plumb bob is my daddy's old plumb bob and I put some washers on there to give it a little bit more weight. You can see it wiggling there just a little bit or maybe me wiggling, but trying to keep that steady where I can bring the log in with the shoulder passes with a little silky saw and get the, the plumb bob over the string. And that way I know that that log, even though it's this high off the floor, is in line with what I started off with down on round one. But I pretty much got the point of that plumb bob on the string. Mm -hmm. 